to help us make sense of all of this, especially the financial implication, we're joined by financial analyst Mohammed Mokta on The Breakfast this morning. Thank you for joining us, sir. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. All right, let's start off with the estimated losses for Lagos State alone. Uh, we understand from the government that it will take over a trillion naira to begin to fix um, infrastructure, repair Lagos. He didn't specify um, specific areas that the monies will go to. Uh, what is your thinking on this? Is that above or below the estimation of what we've lost? Let, let's start with Lagos. Well, I think it's going to be above. Um, the governor is saying one trillion in terms of uh, reconstruction buildings that were destroyed and um, looting that went. I mean, he's not even putting the looting. I think he's just looking at the business complexes that were destroyed, especially the rapid response bus, the BRT bus also that was destroyed. Then looking at government buildings, police station, shopping mall. Now, that is just one part of it. Remember that before now, even when the protest was ongoing, the only the restriction of movement within the Lekki axis ELO and also bringing of goods into Lagos already was estimated at about 700 billion lost in that 12 days. That was not a complete uh, closure. Talk less of now that we have a complete shutdown of the economy of Lagos State, which in value is more or less like the shutdown of the economy of Nigeria. So one trillion could be what the government is looking at in terms of um, construction, the big holes that were burnt down. But when you look at um, goods that were looted, then we should be looking um, over, over a trillion that has been lost during this crisis. Now, not even adding manpower time that can never be recovered. All right. Um, does, does this also include private businesses? Um, in this estimate, if you're talking one trillion naira, are we also referring to the private businesses across the states that have also lost uh, their goods uh, to the to looting? I think the government did not include that. I think it was looking at more or less the construction angle. Um, it was looking at what it would take to reconstruct Lagos, the damage building, the buses that were born, the shopping malls that were affected. I think you don't have an idea of what how much uh, in terms of looting because that can only be done by the companies that are involved. And those companies uh, will start with that, I think, from today where they start taking an assessment. The government has its own looking at only the, the, the reconstruction side, looking at the damage toll gate, looking at the damage equity. And so I think that was what the government was looking at, necessarily not in terms of the goods that were, 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 were looked at. All right, let, let me ask you about uh, insurance. Uh, financial analysts over the years have ham, hammered on the need for businesses to insure um, themselves. What now, what is um, the option uh, for these businesses from the insurance angle? Do you think that the insurance companies will live up to expectation in this uh, scenario? Well, uh... They could, but it all depends. You know, when it comes to insurance, uh, we'll have to look at it in two ways. Um, insurance in Nigeria is one sector that has not uh, added so much to the GDP, despite the kind of large population we have. Definitely, that's a sector that's supposed to be a key driver of the Nigerian economy in terms of GDP and job, job creation. But unfortunately, it's not driving that. Now, that sector also has been involved with a lot of losses even over the years. So with these current um, uh, issues that happen, the breakdown of law order, it could be worse for them financially. So a sector that's already battered, meeting up with some of these demand will be a huge tax for them. So whether they will be able to pay, I think some of them should be able to pay. But again, when it comes to insurance, there are a lot of technicality that they will not tell you because some insurance depend on the type of insurance you go on. Some insurance will tell you that we don't pay for natural disasters. Some insurance will tell you that we have to have a special insurance in terms of riots. Some insurance will tell you that we, we only insure some particular type of goods. Some insurance will tell you that depends on the on the goods that you, you that were damaged at the time we will insure. Now look at it this way. The SMEs that are already struggling to, to make a to, to, to make headway in terms of cost of funding, 
how to expand their business without so much of a, a, a fund from government or from the banking sector. I do say insurance that SME that I want them to be full comprehensive insurance. For me, I think those people that have the full comprehensive insurance will be those most of some of the more that were affected. And you may, it may surprise you that some of these more actually did this insurance through their proxies abroad, not even in Nigeria because of the kind of low confidence level they have in the Nigerian insurance sector. So that, that, that's uh, being ruled out as something that businesses can explore. What is your worry, though, when governments say that they are going to assist uh, businesses get back on their feet? Um, do you think this will go round? And what impact would it have long term for these businesses who have been so badly damaged? Look, the impact is going to be huge. Will government be able to meet all the demands of uh, all the shops and um, places that were looted? I don't think so. Maybe government will give them some funding. Maybe government will say, okay, we'll help you do the reconstruction. Government cannot be saying, we are going to pay for you for the goods that have been looted. Now, it, it, it's going to cost a lot to the Nigerian economy in terms of investment. Most businesses, like especially the malls that were, that were foreign driven, that invested in Nigeria, we see Nigeria as a high risk environment when there is crisis, there is no security to even protect your, your properties or your goods. So in the long run, that is also going to affect us negatively, especially in the area of foreign direct investment into our businesses in Nigeria. That is one big place that we're going to suffer. And that's a sector that, I mean, that's an aspect we have been fighting for that we need to attract more foreign investors into our economy. No foreign investor wants to come into an economy whereby there is no security when there is a crisis. And remember that no, 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 no economy in the world is immune to crisis like this. But what gives them this is the, 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 the security agency making sure that most of all these businesses are protected. And, and then if they are not protected, they are insured and the insurance companies are able to, to pay. Now look at these malls that were destroyed. Most of them give jobs to Nigeria up to like, you have staffs up to like a thousand or there about in those small. Those are direct employment. You are not even looking at the indirect employment. So number one, it will take a long time for those people to get jobs. So we are not creating another job uh, unemployment in, in, in an already un unemployment, uh, unemployed uh, uh, economy. So, the short-term impact is going to be very huge. The long-term implication is also huge in terms of foreign investment. Then recovery. Recovery is going to take a very long time. Some people are saying that recovery could take up to four to eight years. I can't both agree with them because we are talking about huge monumental losses suffered by these businesses. Even if insurance is going to pay all these uh, 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 goods that were looted, it's also going to take time. They will not just start paying tomorrow or next week. And these businesses will not just come back on stream just next week because you're talking about businesses that are involved in importation of some of these goods. You're talking about businesses that deal with perishable and imperishable. You're talking about business that deal with movable and movable goods also. So it's not going to be something that they will recover immediately. You see some of this more might not recover till maybe towards next year. And then that is what you talk about. You're talking about physical recovery. You are not talking about the financial aspect of recovery. So it's going to be very huge. All right. I, I want to talk now about um, how the Lagos State government can also afford uh, this. Um, the 2020 budget for Lagos State was about $920 billion. If we are seeking a trillion naira uh, to replace some of these things, can the state um, afford to, to, of course, spend that much on, uh, on putting back this infra infrastructure? I don't think the state will be able to afford it, even if the federal government also may not be able to, even if it happens to the federal government, but it will be difficult task for the federal government to be surplus of the state. But I think um, this, the federal government might come to the aid of the state. I expect them to do that because Lagos is the state that was worst hit. So I think the governor wants to be talking to the federal government and um, to make matters better for them is because they they also the ruling party is yes, also the ruling party in the federal level. So politically, I think if the political will is there, I think the, the federal government will definitely help Lagos State to recover. So when you add that to what Lagos State will be doing also, 
you might see some recovery. Maybe this is the time that Lagos State should tell us that they care for their businesses, they care for people that have businesses in Nigeria, especially in Nigeria or in Lagos State especially, by giving most of these businesses that were highly uh, affected uh, tax bracket for some a certain amount of uh, of years. That will help them. All the levies that have been charged in businesses may be suspended until their, reco their recovery is certain. So I think that's one incentive that the Lagos State government might do for these businesses that will reduce the, the, the financial burden on Lagos State or, and also on the businesses. Though, on the long run, you might see this will also reduce times of project that Lagos State intends to do for the masses. But you can't eat your cake and have it because it is in the, it, it, it's the prerogative of government to provide security. So once you are lacking in that area, then you have a price to pay, and that is the price they got they will have to pay. Would you also expect that, um, or would it be wrong, you know, for business owners who have suffered this um, uh, massive losses uh, to demand that the Lagos State government takes full responsibility for all that they have lost, uh, seeing that it is the government's responsibility to provide security of lives and property even during a curfew? And if the government fail to do that, um, would you expect that the government should take full responsibility uh, for the losses, uh, even to private businesses? Of course, the government will take full responsibility. They don't have an option. Now, the other one, whether the government full responsibility will be compensating for financial losses. I think that's something that um, the lawyers have to look at. I would not have this kind of um, case before in Nigeria. Maybe this might just be one of those cases that may come up and then become a president. But I think in terms of security, the Lagos State government will take full responsibility. Like you said, there was a coffee. There was the security place and men were supposed to send to strategic area where there are coffees like this. Thankfully, where that means camps we use this and hoodlums we use this every to loot. Remember, there was an issue that we had to deal with, the Islamophobia issue in South Africa. Lagos State didn't learn from some malls were attacked during those periods. So you should know that this will be targeted. So when you are declaring a coffee, those are the areas that security agencies should be protecting. Coffee is not declared because they don't want me and you to move. Coffee is declared so that you can begin to, 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 to send securities to protect valued infrastructure, especially businesses, especially government uh, and buildings that you think could become a target. So that's the whole idea of selling coffee. And if you if you do a coffee and at, at the end of the day you didn't provide this to protect this building, I think it's a, it's also a failure on the part of government. But and Mr. They Mokta, take full responsibility for that. I, I want to take you on the the part um, your agreement that uh, government has um, a responsibility should take full responsibility. Um, while that is accepted, we know that sometimes these things take time. There is a process, uh, you know, uh, you have to apply, you have to be verified um, before monies can be released. If you get lucky, if, you, if there is some, uh, you know, uh, documentation that is incorrect, you are left hanging. So in the immediate, sh in the immediate short meet term, what options are there for businesses to begin to explore to recoup at least um, what they can while they wait for government's response? I think one of the financial institutions have come up with a plan and said that they have about 50 billion for SMEs that were affected by the crisis. I think those SMEs should begin to look at that space. I'm not allowed to call name yet, but I think there's a particular financial institution that have come up with product. And I can assure you, some other financial institution will come up with those kind of products. That is what those SMEs should begin to look at and business that are affected. Otherwise, there's no other means because you, you're talking about going into some of these cash reserves of this business. And remember, these are businesses that are already struggling it, because of the lockdown as a result of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And they were just trying to recover. Even recovery was not even in sight. We're trying to recover and these issues happen. So, they have no option, and I think uh, the financial institutions are saying that those funds will come at almost a 0% interest rate, especially if they can verify that you are, you are affected. And so I think a lot of other financial institutions will come up with products like this. That's why I think this business should be looking at. Um, how, how do you think government can speed up this process if they truly want to assist businesses to uh, regrow? How, what 
things do they need to put in place to speed up the process while other banks are assisting? Uh, unfortunately, we don't have this kind of structure in government. So I, I, I don't know whether we have it in Lagos State, but we don't seem to have this kind of structure. That's why we've been covering that our institutions are very weak. We have very weak institutions that can, uh, that can fast track processes. There's a lot of bureaucracy, especially when it comes to government. You, you've heard, always heard that slogan that said, money, money approved is not money released. So there's a lot of bureaucracy when it comes to government. So I, I, I hope and I believe that with kind of crisis, with kind of losses that Lagos State government have suffered, they might begin to say maybe the airline business will have direct access to some of those uh, ways they want to help business recovery instead of business going through the bureaucracies. Because when you look at it, these are businesses, we could see the damages that have been done, the government that took, uh, took, took a walk there, it took other state governors on the south, southwest and ministers there. So it shouldn't be a problem where we'll be fighting, oh, are you sure your business was involved? These are things that can be verified within the shortest possible time. Within 24 hours, this can be verified, and then you can think of what you want to do for the business, no matter how small it is before you begin to do a, a lot in terms of asking them other questions if you want to go for that. You know that the business building, a business building has been destroyed. You know that the shopping mall has been destroyed. So what do you do? You begin to look at cost of reconstruction if that's what you want to do for them. So I don't think it's rocket science. If the government really are sincere to help government businesses, they will do that. And it will not involve a lot in the other But with government, we know unless this uh, crisis will make them change the way they do things. All right. I, I just want you to um, help us uh, also throw in your thoughts on uh, the loud calls for prosecuting and arresting those um, vandals and looters, as they've been described. Uh, but there is not a, you know, a lot of conversation with regards finding out you know, where the problems you know, are starting from and fixing the level of poverty and the reason you know, why there was so much looting. If we're gonna be moving forward, um, what do you think we should be focusing on? I think uh, in terms of that, I, first and foremost, I, I, I am in support of that most of all these people that looted should be, should be arrested, should be tried, because you could see some of them displaying their, 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 their they are looting even on social media. We saw them uh, filming them, showing all that, look, this is what I'm doing. So it, it's something that uh, they could be arrested. Now, what can be done? They have become part of the problem in the society. And unfortunately, these are the same people that um, government officials, especially politicians, use during, during elections. And sometimes after they use them, they abandon them to the next election. So most of them were venting their anger on the politician. That's why you see some of them were attacking personal properties of politicians because they are the child of the politicians. You just need to go around Lagos and look at the motor park, look at the bus stop. You know the kind of mess these people have caused for us. And, and the government were just sitting there not doing anything. If I the government, this is time to begin to step in if you have the political will to stop these hoodlums and then begin to arrest them. And then not just arrest and try. Because we have done that, sometimes it doesn't work. We need to begin to see how they can engage them in meaningful venture towards adding value to the economy of the state by taking them into, uh, into like, uh, taking them to vocational training institutions where they can learn trade, where they can learn other things that can bring food on their table. Because like the same say, the I do man is a devil workshop. And so they are I do and they are used once in a while for political gain. So when those things are not happening, then they have to look for other means. And some of these means are what they, they normally do, and especially when they have opportunity in terms of crisis in looting, they took it up or pulled themselves to do exactly that. So for me, I think it just to be a, a two-way approach, the carrot and stick approach, where you are trying those that were, were involved in looting. You try to rehabilitate those that you think were not involved in looting or those that were not caught looting, because right. it will be difficult to say any of them were not involved in one form of looting or the other. All right, Mr. Mokta, thank you very much uh, for joining us on The Breakfast and sharing your thoughts. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Good morning once again. Good morning. Good morning.
um, it's pretty heartbreaking when you see videos of um, these shop owners. There was one man that I, I was practically bawling when I saw the way he was crying. From He had struggled from beginning. He was looking helplessly as his uh, warehouse was looted. People were holding him back, no security, nothing. It, I don't know how government can go about you know, addressing these challenges, but I am hopeful that though they have not really stepped up to the plate in recent times when it comes to securing lives and property, that now that we've seen this reality of you know, looting and this very bad side of Nigerians, you know, that they would step up and uh, help these um, hard-working Nigerians whose lives have been you know, turned upside down by these looters. It, it also creates a conversation about the importance of insurance. But um, aside that, I'm very concerned, and that's one of the reasons I asked the question, I'm very concerned about why we focus a lot now on, oh, we must arrest, we must prosecute, we must, you know, you know chase those looters out of the streets. And we are pretty, I don't hear a loud conversation on what's the reason we have so many, so many hundreds and yeah, thousands of Yeah, there are loads of, of issues, but we cannot rationalize people going to Private it's not. Business. It's not rationalizing it. It, yes. it is. When are we going to? When is government going to have that conversation? And this is why, no matter how many people you arrest, and prosecute, and not rationalize and remind them that it's bad to loot, there is still a hundred thousand, two million more of those people who are hungry and jobless. I saw a picture this morning, um, Alibaba posted of a, a man who's um, fiscally impaired. Um, he has one leg, but he was still able to carry a bag of whatever it was carrying. Um, and you could see in his face that this is... I, I get what you're saying, that priority we should at have, this point. We yes, should have but a conversation. It doesn't, these people, I do believe, uh, like uh, he said, that they should be found, if possible, and told, and find a way to, if possible, get back some of these things from them, you know, while, while we have all the issues. We will deal with them one at a time. I, you know. We've been saying this for 30 years. That's the thing. We know we, we have, have a problem with somewhere. poverty. We've been talking about it. We're still not doing. That's what I'm saying here. We're is, still not doing. This is the current situation, Osaogi. Uh. People looted. And this is our commonwealth. You, you heard of Senator's homes that was invaded. You know, uh, youth empowerment um, equipment that was yes. gotten was taken away by these looters. Are we going to prosecute becomes, those people who kept those things in their homes for That is long? another conversation. But for now, how can we recoup? You know, we start from one place and we move to the other. Anyway, Hello. We will Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.